Good morning, my fellow artists. So today we're going to take a look at our second foray and adventure into the world of using one-point perspective. Now remember, perspective is a trick that we as the artists play. We use this trick to create distance and depth in our artwork. Now with using perspective, a couple things to touch on. One vanishing point. So vanishing point, a point is a dot. When something vanishes, it disappears. So the vanishing point is the, the dot, the point in our drawing where all of our lines converge and come together and everything gets so small that it looks like it disappears. Now we know that things don't actually shrink and they don't disappear. They just look like they do because they're so far away from us. Now with perspective, we also have the rules of size. The rules of size say that anything that goes in our background, the part of the drawing that's far away from us, must be small. Anything that goes in our foreground, that's the part that's the closest to us, must be big. And anything in our middle ground has to be in between. So the middle ground is relative. It has to be bigger than the background, but smaller than the foreground. That being said, let's take a look at what we're going to be working on. So this is our end goal. To do that, we need to start with our square piece of paper, our pencil, and our straight edge. Straight edge is a really important tool for this because we need these lines that go to our vanishing point to be straight. So, first thing we need to do is find the middle of our paper. So we're gonna fold our paper into a triangle, corner to corner, and then we're gonna fold it into another triangle like so. When we open that up, we have an X on our paper. Where these two creases intersect each other, we, that's where our vanishing point goes. We want to put a dot right there. Okay, next thing we want to do is use our straight edge, and we're going to put a line right on those creases in our paper so that we have this X all the way across our paper. Now, you do not have to use the straight edge for this part. I'm using it because I'm a big fan of very, very straight, clean lines. But it is acceptable to just freehand those as long as you stay on top of the crease. Now, this next part, we got to pay very careful attention to what we're doing. We have to make a box around our vanishing point. But, but the corners of our box all have to be on these lines. If we draw it like this, so let's say this is my paper, this is my X, this is my dot. If we draw it like this, or like, or maybe like this, it just won't work. The, the, red, the whole rest of the drawing falls apart and will not work unless we have these corners on this box. So right now what we're looking at is the start of our hallway. We have a wall, a wall, a ceiling, and a floor. So now what we want to do is we want to make this, to make this tile pattern. We lay our straight edge down so that it's touching our vanishing point. Because remember all these lines that go away from us, they all go to the vanishing point. And we're gonna make one, two, three, Four lines. Okay? That's the start of our front. Now, before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and we're going to erase everything inside that box except our dot. We're going to keep our vanishing point. We don't want to get rid of that yet. Keep our vanishing point, okay? So then to finish the floor, we just use our straight edge and we start. Remember, things that are far away from us have to be small. So we're going to start. And every time we make a line, our line is a little bit further from where we start. Now notice I turned my, how I turned my paper. That's because it's always easier to use a straight edge 
if you're going up and down. And remember that your straight edge should always be opposite the hand that you hold your pencil with. So there, see how my tiles start small, get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. That's it for the floor. So now the doors, the doors can be tricky. So with the doors, what we need to do is line our ruler up on our vanishing point, and we're only gonna draw the top edge, just the top of our door. So then we're gonna take our straight edge, and I'm gonna put my straight edge so that it is flat and flush with the bottom of my paper down here, and then we'll bring this side of the door straight down. I think I may have drawn the top of my door a little bit longer than I want it to be, but that's okay. And you'll notice that one side of the door is longer than the other. It should be because this side of the door is closer to us, so it should appear bigger. So let's do another door on this side. I'm going to do two doors on this side. I'm going to do one door way back here. I'm going to do one door that doesn't even fit all the way on my page. So again, I make sure the short side of my ruler is lined up with the bottom of my paper so that I have a line that goes straight down. When you're making doors, if the sides of your door go like this, so there's the vanishing point and there's the top of my door, the sides of the door should not slant like this. They should be straight down, straight down to the bottom of the page. So again, I line my ruler up and pull that line down. Okay, so now we got some doors. Our hallway goes somewhere, but it's very dark. We can't see anything. We need some lights. Now, if you look above you in the art room, you'll see the kind of lights that we have in our school. We have these long, what shape would you call that? Yeah, I agree, that's definitely a rectangle. Um, so when we look at this light here, we're gonna use that same long rectangle shaped light. However, Again, we have to start with our vanishing point. So I'm going to put two lights in my hallway. Um, when we use the straight edge and the ruler, we are drawing the long side of the rectangle. So that'll be for my first light. That'll be for my second light. And I'm going to pivot, line up on my vanishing point. Ooh, I'm going to have to turn this the other way so I can see my other lines. That's going to be a little bit better. So then first light second light and again we need these other sides to be straight lines so I line my ruler up with the edge of my paper see there and then on this one I only have to do the one side because that light is going to go off the edge of the paper and then maybe I'll have some door handles so this door hand this door is closest to me so its handle should be the, that's right, it should be the biggest. So we'll put a big doorknob there. This one's a little bit further away, so it should be a little bit, that's right, smaller. And then finally, this door that's way back here has the smallest doorknob. And then once we're to this point, guys, this is our, this is our goal for today. We'll take a look at how we're going to handle color and value and everything else in the next video the next time I see you. Good luck and happy hearting.